back to you, Eric. Sorry for that. Hey, no worries. So this question uh, is for Mike Riley. And first, I want to let the council know in case they're not aware. Uh, up until I think it was maybe last year, there were two separate street funds. And I believe one was the Transportation Capital Projects Fund. The other one was the Residential Streets Fund. The administration persuaded the council that uh, the accounting of the two separate funds was onerous and took a lot of time and effort. And we were told, let's just combine it all into the Transportation Capital Funds Project Fund, but there would be a separate accounting for residential streets. So I applaud Mike for bringing up the fact that, oh, we're taking some money that is, although not in a dedicated residential street fund, there is still an accounting for it. So he's disclosing that to council. So kudos to you, Mike, for that. My understanding uh, going past, and I wrote the ordinances, so hopefully I'm not wrong, is that, uh, well, exception of the license plates. So that was originally for the TIB fund, which used to be the Transportation Improvement Board until the council rolled it up into the city council. So that's where your $20 license tab fees, which is approximately 600,000 a year. And then we took 100% uh, of the stormwater utility tax and we dedicated that, I believe, to the residential street funds, which is now rolled up in the street capital fund. And then we subsequently took the excess revenue from the street uh, street cameras, uh, which is about two hundred thousand, and and by the way, the stormwater utilities I think is about three hundred thousand, uh, and the two hundred thousand from the red light cameras is variable. Some years it can be higher, some years it can be lower. But for argument's sake, about one million dollars is dedicated to residential streets, and. Um, now we now I'm being told we have a two and a half million dollar surplus. So I'm a little concerned. I've, I've spent my entire time on councils scraping for money for streets, and it's disappointing. Uh, at one point, when we were able to do the utilities, I was I was able, I believe, to persuade the administration, and they did it, to increase our residential street crew to do sidewalks and to work on local streets. And I think we added. Two people or four people, I forget, and we bought some equipment. We got it going again. So I'm, I'm disappointed to hear we have a two and a half million dollar surplus. Uh, we can discuss that in public works that hasn't been utilized. Um, first of all, Mike, am I wrong in my describing of the history of that? Is there anything you want to correct me on? Uh, I'd, I'd have to do some digging on the ordinances and where things had, had landed. Yeah. I know the the red light differential. I uh, went to TransCap in the 315. I don't think it was dedicated directly to residential streets. We want some flexibility in that, but we can I look think back you're at correct that. On that. Yeah, and okay. then also the storm, and then the stormwater utility tax money is also a, a dedicated source to TransCap that sits in fund balance to help offset things we don't get funded for. So, I, but so I will look okay. back at those for clarity. I no. think they're 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 street. There's for streets, but not dedicated just for residential. It's just so, the TBD okay. dollars are right. Okay, so then that. That makes it even more glaring then, um, isn't in that this is license tab money that we're thinking about rating the fund to pay for transportation capital projects. So, um, Mike, besides those two items that I listed, what other revenues are transferred into transportation capital projects funds to give our matching money for these type of projects? Uh, typically, REIT. REIT is our primary match for our matching okay. funds for any kind of uh, federal match or state match. Right. And that's what I thought. So that's where I want to get next to next is that what is our REIT balance? Did you consider our REIT balance? We did. In, we did. You, okay. So what's the deal? Yeah, we went. And so I, I'll have to pull the exact balance we're at now. But the client, I think we've talked about tonight, the climate we're under and looking at some cost overruns and, and some of these other projects that we have unforeseen, kind of know where we're going to end up. We want to be able to kind of hold hold pat on, on those projects that really don't fit the nature of a residential street project. Um, and, and knowing we're going to probably have to utilize those resources to continue and, and finalize some of these projects we're already under, where we've already got commitments. So we wanted to hold there and, and talk about this project with Perry, having uh, characteristics of a residential street, we felt like the nexus was much closer. And, and that's, that, that's, that's where we're presenting what we have tonight to you. So, so Mike, we you, are, didn't answer yeah. my, you, didn't, you didn't answer my question because we had a discussion 
less than a month ago that we have an estimated yes. $3 million windfall for REITs. So my question to you, yep. sir, yes. is what is our REIT balance? I'd have to pull that number and send it to you, but it is, it is uh, we, are tr we are trending um, well above target uh, right now. We had, uh, you're correct at the time, we were over th uh, $3 million in excess of our, of our target. Okay. So I think a compromise would be a commitment. Go ahead and use this money. Um, but it would be, look, it's licensed to have money. And that money was originally set to pay for local streets. And now when this conversation started before our public works people chimed in, I was under the belief that Perry Avenue was a residential. I hear it's a collector. And I think um, Shane confirmed that it, it is an arterial. And so it's always been the intent of the council to have a residential street funds be recognizing that they get revenue from nowhere else besides that license tab money to get dedicated for residential streets. The arterials, uh, as you can see here, can get grant money. And so the theory was always to take it from REIT or from transportation capital projects balances because there's other inflows that go into that. So if you have to take it from the residential street program, there has to be a mechanism put in place to pay it back. Because that's what you promised the taxpayers when you did the $20 license tab. Please don't forget that. That was a promise to the taxpayers. So go ahead and use it, but put a mechanism so you pay it back. And it's just paying back yourself. So go ahead, go through the project. But I think that's a reasonable solution. That's all I have. All right, looks like we'll go around again. Anna. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak a second time. Um, Councilor Younger, you still have your hand up. Did you have more to say? Oh, sorry, Mom, President Goodnow. No, okay. Um, Councillor Younger is being overly modest here because it, it was a, his direct and urgent a, insistence that the money from the red light cameras was dedicated to the residential streets fund. And he persuaded the council to make that happen. So just saying, um, not just the taxpayers, but the voters. And I'm sorry that I haven't spoken to every single one of you, my colleagues, but I know that in Jennifer's district and in Jeff's district, um, that potholes and paint are exactly what people want. It's the number one thing you knock on their doors and what do they say? I want these potholes fixed. They want sidewalks, failing sidewalks. They want just something to give an idea of where the lane edge is. Something that as kids are walking down the streets and President Goodnow, this is off topic, but it'll be brief, um, that the kids will show up on those dark mornings and those dark afternoons in the winter. So I entirely agree with the idea that if we're gonna take this money out of residential streets and I'm, perfectly willing to consent to that and to have it placed on the consent agenda. But we have to have that money and we have to have a way to actually do the maintenance on the neglected streets. This is what Councillor Younger says, the taxpayers, and I would say the voters, I don't think there's that much difference. Like, let's give the people the things that, <laughs> at least some of the things they want, they want. Um, I don't want to prolong this discussion forever and ever world without end, but I would like us to set aside some time in the next few weeks to really sit down and discuss this um, because it is now already six o'clock. So that's all. I'm hoping that the rest of you can agree that this is something we need to talk about within the next few weeks. In the meantime, I, my opinion is that we should just say, Yes, take the money, go forth, make 11th and Perry finally happen. Thank you. Jennifer. Yeah, I, I feel like we've definitely discussed this at light and we have a consensus that we wanna move forward. And I think at this point in time, we're, we're I don't wanna say we're wasting time on the education piece, 
Um, but I do want to just ask a couple of hopefully quick questions. And so I, again, my understanding is there is a mechanism to replace the, the funding. It just will take two years. And so I don't know if um, Councilman Younger was proposing that we look at the re surplus at the end of the year and put it back in immediately, or we just wait for the mechanism that replaces it at 650K a year uh, for the next two years. Um, I wanted to quickly ask, I don't think it's a quick question though. I hope it is. But we talked in um, we talked in the finance meeting about the definition about the um, functional classification, and that there's not a good definition of what a residential street is. But there are definitions because you know you have arterial, you have collectors, you have residential streets. And so, can you quickly, if it, if possible, to quickly discuss what did again what did you mean by uh, the functional classification of a street? Is is that a question for staff? Yes. Shane, you want to handle that one? Yeah, I'll, I, I can handle that one. Um, yeah. So, so there's basically three categories um, of what we have for uh, for streets. There's arterials, uh, which are um, basically for mobility. They're highly traveled, um, have a lot of uh, volume on them. Uh, there's a collector uh, facilities that and uh, and local roads is what we call them, uh, not residential but local roads and. Um, and uh, collector facilities and arterial facilities are functionally classified roads. Um, and, uh, and collector facilities um, are uh, kind of sort of like the go-to, like the in-between between, between uh, arterials and, and uh, residential streets. Residential streets are residential in nature, they're low volume streets, and collectors are, are basically um, in, in between. So it's collecting all the traffic from residential streets, basically, um, and it's funneling that traffic to arterials. Um, so, uh, so if you're looking at, um, you know, a small, medium, large, uh, for example, for, uh, for uh, roadways and arterials are the, the highly traveled ones um, and, uh, and collectors, many go collectors and, and residential and, streets. So and, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Um, so I was going to say, so was so what I heard Mike say, or maybe it was, it, maybe even it was it, it was you or, or Ned, you were saying even using the functional classification. And so what you're kind of asking for is a loose interpretation of residential street for this particular project to use these funds. Um, and uh, but you have a very specific definition of what residential collector and arterial actually are. Isn't, isn't that correct? And so we really are kind of going outside of the scope, but you're asking really for an exception for these funds. Am I correct? Well, well I think there's, um, there's, so there's a disconnect, I think, between the character of a roadway facility right. uh, and then what it's functionally classified. Um, and, uh, and Perry Avenue, I think, would be one of those facilities that we, I would say, is a disconnect. Um, you know, when I, when we look at arterials, we're looking at higher travel facilities. We're looking at 11th Street, right, um, which has 20,000 vehicles a day. We're looking at uh, SR 303, which has uh, up to almost 40,000 vehicles a day. But when you look at Perry Avenue, you know, we have 2,000 to 4,000 vehicles a day, but we're calling it an arterial. Well, if you go down to Perry Avenue uh, and you look at the street, the character of the street is residential in nature. Um, and so... Uh, we have a lot of that here in the city where we just have a disconnect between what we're calling, um, you know, a facility uh, and what the actual character of the facility is. And I think I think what we're trying to say tonight is that if you go down to Perry Avenue, uh, you, you're not expecting to see a SR 303, you know, Warren Avenue Bridge yeah. type uh, facility. Right. You go down there and you see a residential, um, you know, residential houses on the side of the street. You get a small um you know, town feel if you if you drive the street, um, you know, and uh, neighbors are active, um, you know, you get a lot of pedestrians down there. And, um, and so um, I think, you know, um, you know, the, the, the disconnect there is, is kind of sort of what we're saying is, um, and why we're trying to say, okay, well, yes, I mean, it is more residential in nature, it's more small town feel in nature. And, and that's where, um, you know, the residential part of it um, plays in. Yeah. To that. Go ahead, yeah. Ned. Go ahead, Ned. Uh, so, and I wasn't trying to be a wiseacre when I said it was that for staff, because honestly, that's what we're asking council. Like, I've I wasn't involved in the conversation. I know Council Member Younger. You know, he's had a lot of uh, interaction for how this program has moved forward and what the um, ordinance have said. And I wasn't really involved in that, quite honestly. So I'm sort of working with the hand I've been dealt. Um, <clears throat> but it. 
I think we're asking the question back. Like, is there room to be more flexible? Is the intent that it's only functionally classified residential streets? It seems like from the description that I heard earlier, <laughs> we're looking for streets that uh, can't get grant funding any other way. Uh, but I also heard Shane say, you know, our collectors are sort of orphans uh, and they're like in between where the residential street would fund improvements and what we would go after for grants. So um, I, you know, the way we've been working was we've been restricting that uh, conservatively to only those functionally classified residential streets, right? Okay. If it's a collector, sub-collector arterial, we don't feel like we've been given the authority to spend the money without council approval on those streets. So I'm hearing that you feel like- Asking a question back a little bit. So uh, what I'm hearing is that, is that you're feeling like you've been good stewards of these funds. Uh, and this is the one exception, that's why you're bringing it to council because it's like the first exception, you're sort of asking off of that functional classification that we know of for residential collector, arterial, et cetera. I hope we're being good stewards, but I'm I just I'm trying to confirm if we're if what we understand is the collective council understanding. And we're not going to sort that out tonight, but no. I think it's a really good topic to bring forward later. So. Yeah, I agree with the mayor that we should have this as a uh, retreat item and we should discuss road because it is. And, and to clarify on honest point, everybody in my district, not everybody, but all my surveys, uh, Pine Road, which is pretty comparable to. Uh, Perry Avenue, right? Uh, they want a sidewalk. They want safe path to Blueberry Park. Okay, had to throw that in there. The end. Mayor Wheeler. Thank you. And I think Ned and Council Councilor Chamberlain just summarized quite well the the funding we're requesting, um, which has contributed, you know, has a TBD has contributed to that fund, but it's one of the sources we're drawing from a fund that has TBD and other sources. So to directly relate it to TBD funds is, is not quite fair. And honestly, what I'd like to do is when we have discussions, we need to simplify this a little more, give us some flexibility so we can leverage these, these scarce dollars to the maximum benefit. And we're, we're here now because it's, I mean, to be honest with you, over the years, um, we, it's been legislated in a way where it's become clunky for us to operate efficiently. And I don't want to, to um, have our future discussions, how can we do better in a very clunky system when I would like to propose that, that we, we streamline this, we make it more flexible for us and we will account for every dollar. And then we can start to get back down to the, what do our citizens want and what are we willing to pay for to get it? Because right now I don't think any, it's so complicated that People think there's might be money here and some know there's not. We don't want that. I would rather just have a very frank discussion with our, with our citizens and council with you on what we can produce with what we have and then talk about how badly do we want to expand the program that we've developed. So that's, it's as simple as that. And thanks, thanks again. Uh, hope we can move on with this as uh, others have said. Um, I'm, I'd love, I think Eric has a direct comment on that. If, Denise, would you concede a moment if Eric's quick? Eric, go ahead. Yeah, so it's been legislated this way because working with the past current administration and the past administration, they wouldn't put ad adequate funds towards streets every budget. So we wrote the ordinance this way to get the administrations to fix our local streets. There's a simple solution. We can pass this, but Mike, you can write in a loan. The city borrows the money from the from the TBD funds or the residential street funds, and it pays it back. You can put a two-year time payment, three-year, and where do you get those funds? You get it from future REIT money. You need to honor the taxpayers and what these card tabs were for. This is extremely frustrating, extremely frustrating. All right, Denise. Yeah, for me, it is all about process, and uh, uh, it, it definitely bothers me that what I heard, uh, and I definitely hear the mayor's frustration uh, with, uh, you know, it's not really on the council goals and priorities, and yet here we are talking about it. We certainly hear from our constituents, and many of us live in direct, directly in neighborhoods that are that are impacted. Uh, uh, Anna has certainly uh, taught 
us all about her district. Um, what I heard the mayor say, it's a matter of capacity. It's not a price. Those funds have sat there and been not used because he doesn't have, uh, it needs its own program. It needs its own staff. Um, and so I'm, I'm wondering, you know, okay, that may come up in, in budget, but, you know, the, the, the mayor, uh, and this budget, I want to remind council, the budget, uh, really is the mouthpiece of the, the, the goals and vision and, and work of the city. And if, if we believe, despite whether it's on our goals and priorities, if we're hearing enough from our constituents, I've kind of not been raising the issue because I'm trusting the process. I'm seeing, you know, improvements in some parts of the city. But I, then I heard Mike Riley, I think, on this call say that he might have to go back to that same pot for, you know, some other projects. Uh, and so this trusting the process that I've been doing, uh, if the money drives up, dries up to do it, and the mayor doesn't have dedicated staff for this, you know, neighborhood improvement program, um, it sounds like it could be a capacity issue. If that's it, fine, bring it to us. But yeah, I'm kind of with Eric. If this was dedicated funding, I know there's wiggle room. I know all, all of that, but it seems like the city has not made this a priority uh, within its budget, within its work plan, within, and maybe council, we need to, when we come together in January, it was on my list. I don't know if it was on, I was saying, hey, public works, as you're doing all that work on the corridor, on that state highway, why don't you just do some little work on the side roads where we live and have to, you know, navigate and stuff. And, um, but yeah, so there is frustration. There's going to be frustration. I heard things that I'm concerned about from Mike Riley saying that he might, you know, we might have to do this uh, again. Uh, and then it doesn't sound like the word, we have the capacity uh, to, to, to do it in the first place. So I do have concerns. I'm saying, yes, let's do this. But I think city, I think staff have heard our concerns and uh, will uh, work accordingly, hopefully. All right, That's folks, it. let's, uh, new information, quick information. Mayor Wheeler, go ahead. Yeah, so we have the capacity to, to follow through with the work plans that are on our plate right now. The, and so the, what we're looking for is streamlining it so we aren't spending this time and we're already moving forward um, uh, doing the work on behalf of the city. The, the capacity that I'm talking about is what everybody else wants to see more of. Everybody wants more, uh, I'll just say paint sidewalks, uh, repaired streets. They want more, they want greater volume. That's the capacity I'm talking about. We can perform the plans we have in place. We will, we will give you metrics every year of how many uh, feet of sidewalks we'll repair, how many curb cuts we'll put in, how many, how many miles of road we'll chip seal. We can do that within this budget. Um, we can also support these projects uh, coming in there. Now, what we're trying to do uh, right now is probably a practice that we feel should already be allowed for, city, for the administration to do. What we're asking you to do tonight should be allowed. Um, but we don't want to, we didn't want to get into that conversation. We just wanted this one-time conversation. Um, and then the future discussion is to, to loosen up the legislative fixes that have gone on. We're on the same page. I, uh, Councilor, Councilor Younger said they had to force the administration to make this a priority. That's untrue. You know, that's, right, uh, we, yeah, we made it a priority. Yeah, okay. And so, uh, Councilor Goodnow, I just want to say we're with you. It's a priority for us. So. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ned. So I just, uh, I think I'd be doing Tom a disservice who couldn't be here tonight if I didn't mimic what the mayor just said. It is residential streets and our uh, program is definitely a priority. Like Dave Carter runs a crew that is putting in curb ramps, fixing sidewalk, putting sidewalk in with TIB money. Uh, he's managing, uh, the chip seal project, 
uh, they're working on overlay. Like we have a robust work plan right now. So I don't want anyone to have the impression that we're not spending money on residential streets and that they're not a priority because they absolutely are. Like, I, I just can't be clear about that. We spend a lot of time and energy to put in a very robust work plan that, you know, is probably more than Dave can deliver now. And, uh, and so we do a lot to try to work on residential streets um, and, you know, other streets. Uh, so, and, and we have added staff, which we appreciate to try to get a street crew that's sized, right sized to be able to do work in house. And the reason we get sidewalk money from TIB is because they like that we don't have high administrative costs to deliver sidewalk improvements and CBDG money comes in because of that. So um, we work hard to do that. Um, some of the money has been offset by grants, like I said, like, and, and then we find grant money and then it offsets the money that was dedicated to residential streets. It's been tough to deliver work the last two years, right? For various reasons. So, I mean, but we definitely prioritize getting this work done and we're trying to be good stewards uh, of that, so. All right, uh, Mike Riley, Anna, I'm, I'm gonna cut it off. You're not getting a chance. Mike Riley. I'm gonna be real fast. I was just, I just was gonna mirror exactly what uh, Ned and uh, the mayor said is, uh, with the work plan and, and the amount of effort that's dedicated to res residential streets. There are four, four FTEs dedicated strictly to residential and that and that's been made possible through the, through the dedication of the administration and council wh where we're at today. So I won't I won't speak anymore. I think they hit it perfectly, but I know there's you know new council members so definitely wanted to, to say that. and you'll see that in the budget the budget process issue. You'll see the work plan that public works delivers just for residential roadway. It's pretty impressive. So I just want to mention that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mike. So um, there's a, a ton of good stuff that's been talked about tonight, and I agree with almost all of it, if not all of it. I think this is, it's, this is almost to me like a semantic issue. And one of the problems, first of all, if you ask all those people who live on those streets, if it's a residential street, it's a residential street, right? So it's a little semantics, but also it seems like if it serves the purpose of a collector, it's um, it's on the low end of the collector list, which means it's never going to get fixed with grant funding that we have. Uh, the, the the other collectors are going to degrade and need busier collectors are going to degrade and need work before this one comes up on the list. It's just that you know. We, ha we have to make some definitions. And it was probably moved to the collector list because somebody thought, oh, great, we can get funding for it. The funding's not coming fast enough. I think, I think we, we I, anyways, I, I support this. Um, I think that, um, like I said, this project's been held over this community, this neighborhood for a while now. Um, they're, they're ready to support it. We're ready to support it. And I think we've done a good job of finding a way to keep things on track. We don't want to give this money back to TIB, if that's where it comes from or whatever. But the other thing is when we're t earlier tonight, like an hour ago, there was a conversation about how we're asking TIB for more money. That money comes from projects that don't move forward because they also have to move the money. It has happened before where we've, we've gotten bonus money, uh, you know, from, from a funder. Um, anyways, um, I, I, I would like to just wrap this up. Um, if, if, you know, council's okay with that. Um, <laughs> so how would you like to treat this? Actually, let me say one more thing before I do that. I would say for me, and I know I speak for at least a couple others, that I would like the administration to, when you present the budget, to please put some of this back. Okay? So I think, uh, you know, I, I don't want to hear about surpluses if we're not putting some of that back in here. How do we feel about consent? General business. Consent. No, 
Noah? Well, we've got a request for general business. So we'll yeah, and I like my question answered why we can't uh, have this as a loan. We can still pass this, but it's an officially a loan from one fund to the other. Still hasn't been answered, but maybe you can answer it next week. Thank you. Okay, that's, I mean, I was, I mean, I feel like we've got some control on that, Eric, as far as uh, insisting that uh, money be transferred at, at budget time. But um, all right, we're gonna move on. General business it is. Up next, public works 